In order to use Bitstream Font Navigator as part of your workflow, you need to configure it first so it knows where you have fonts on your system. The first time you run it, you're going to get this wizard. Let's click Next, and it's going to ask us where we have fonts. So the first thing you want to do is point at only the Windows Fonts folder. So if I scroll down on my operating system drive, I'm going to find various folders. One of them should be Windows. We want to expand that, and then I'm going to choose just the Fonts folder. I'm going to go ahead and say Include Subfolders, just in case there are some there. We'll click Next. It's going to look in that folder, and then Finish, and it found those fonts. You'll see them here. I have way too many installed with 690, and everything it found is listed over here. Now if you followed the instructions, you've stored fonts outside of the Windows Fonts folder. So choose File, and the first menu item, you're not seeing it, but it's Find Fonts. We see a very similar screen. I keep mine on the D drive in a folder named Fonts. I'm going to include the subfolders because I have numerous folders inside of that. We'll click OK. It's going to search and you can see the number is growing very fast. It's probably going to find somewhere in the neighborhood of 20,000 or more fonts here. So this number is going to click up until it hits that total. The good news is you only have to do this when you first start Font Navigator and then if you do add fonts to your system later you need to do it. The reason we're doing this as three separate steps is Font Navigator determines which font takes priority based on when it was found. So we wanted to find first those in the Windows Fonts folder then we want to find the fonts in the folder we choose and I'm going to run it one more time to pick up any stray fonts that don't happen to be in this folder. It should be a good two-thirds to three-quarters of the way done. Like I said, I believe there are around 20,000 fonts it's going to find. One problem you may run into is if you have more fonts than 60,000. The catalog seems to have a problem, so if you have way too many fonts, you're going to have to break them up somehow into multiple catalogs. Okay, so it's found all of the fonts in that folder. Our number of installed fonts hasn't changed, but this list has changed drastically. I'm going to choose Find Fonts one more time, so File, and the first choice is Find Fonts. This time, I'm going to select my entire D drive instead of just the one fonts folder. We'll say OK. It's going to find a handful of extras that weren't in the folder we already searched. And again, I remind you, we're doing the three-step process so that the fonts in the first two passes would take priority over this third pass. And once it's done, we don't have to worry about this again unless we add new fonts to our system. So it's going to take you a few minutes up front, but once you're done, it's not a problem at all. In our case, it's taken around five minutes to find all of the fonts, and then we're finished. Okay, so now we have the four windows. This window is every font it found on your system. Those fonts are not necessarily installed. Those in the top right are the ones installed, and you'll see there's 690. 
There are icons next to each font. So a TT indicates a true type font, an O indicates an open type font, and if I scroll down, I'm going to find a T1 that indicates a postscript font. If I click on a font, you'll see a preview here of what it looks like. If there are more than one weight of that font, it would list them. So let me scroll down a little bit farther. Let's try this font. You'll see again, one. We'll scroll down a little farther. Again, just one. We'll go to Caslon Pro, and you'll see it has four weights. So if I want to add a font to my installed list, I simply drag it from the left window and drop it in the right. Now our number of installed is 690. When I drop this, it goes up to 694. Should I wish to uninstall a font, I can drag it back the other way. It's that easy to add and remove fonts. You have the ability to have groups. So if I right click and choose new group, let's call this sample. And then I can have a group. Let's add to that. I'm going to drag fonts from the top window and add them to that group. Let me just find another one here real quick. So I could add several here, and then I can install that group by dragging it to the top right. To uninstall, right click and choose uninstall. Now if I'm looking at a font and I need to see exactly what it looks like, I can right click in this window, I can change the sample size, I can also change the text. So if you don't want the quick brown fox, you can change it to whatever you like. That can be handy if you're trying to match a logo. Let's look at a few other things. In the view menu, you can choose to view fonts by format, and I realize this is probably off of the movie screen, but you can choose to only see true type, postscript, or open type. You can view by style, and there are several different styles. Now keep in mind, that assumes the font manufacturer has put styles into the fonts. And let's go to the file menu, and I'm going to choose print samples and this allows us to print a sample sheet so we've got our printer here you can do a sample a family or a character chart pick one font print all three so you can see what they look like and then if you want to create a book of all your fonts you can choose one of those three and print more fonts let's go ahead and cancel that if you right click on a font you can choose properties and that will show you where it's stored the copyright associated with it. You can look at the character chart, you can look at sample text, and much more. So there are a lot of things Font Navigator can do, but the most important thing is it helps you keep your fonts under control. So make sure you set it up, have it find your fonts, and when you need to add or remove fonts, use Font Navigator and you're going to find things work a lot more smoothly.